What's up, witches? I'm Mia Magic. Welcome back to the Wizarding World. We have a very exciting and very auspicious full moon happening on Al Hallows Eve or Halloween this year. Not only is it a blue moon, our second full moon in a month, which really the full moon comes at the same time, about 29 and a half days. So our months are part of the modern Gregorian calendar, but that's neither here nor there. So right now the sun is in Scorpio. This is the sign of transformation sex, death, and the occult. Scorpio is not afraid of the darkness, not afraid of the depths. And the full moon is in Taurus, which is ruled by Venus. So it's all about our love, our relationship to money and pleasure. So this full moon is all about completing the cycles because full moons are about completion. This is about completing the cycles of the ways that maybe we've been disempowered in our relationships or disempowered by our relationship to money. Or maybe we don't have enough love for ourselves and maybe we've been just totally unkind to ourselves throughout this very challenging quarantine. Samhain, which is the ancient Gaelic term for Halloween, has always been known as a time when the veil is thin. This is when winter is arriving. This really marks the dark half, the cold half of the year. And in ancient times, the day after Samhain was actually the new year. So we began the year in winter. That was how we started, was with that dark gestational period, with our energy going inward, and then we would emerge in springtime. And so this is really the witch's new year. So full moon, perfect time for New Year's Eve, okay? We get to complete all of these old cycles. And being the Taurus full moon, this year has been really challenging for a lot of people in regards to their relationships, to their career, to their finances, because we've witnessed all the places where we were out of alignment and all of the things that we want to call into our lives, all of the ways that we want to be transformed and to experience life in a different way than we have before. So some really beautiful ways to honor this full moon and to celebrate or to create your own rituals are not only to honor your ancestors, which is the way that Samhain and Day of the Dead has been celebrated for generations in both the Celtic, Gaelic cultures and in Central America throughout Latin America, dating back all the way to the Aztecs. You can also just spend time deeply connecting to nature, to the energy of seeds, of new life, and all new life begins in the darkness. We start out in the dark of the womb. Seeds grow from the dark of the earth. So this is a beautiful moment for all of us to align with that energy. Not be afraid of the darkness. Not be afraid of what it means to be thrust deeply into the earth so that we can be encouraged to grow and sprout and blossom anew, to be reborn. So during this quarantine, what did you learn about your relationship to your earthly reality? Taurus is ruled by Venus and it's also a fixed earth sign. So that means that it's very stable. It's very grounded. It's very much about our earthly reality. So money, finances, our body, our pleasure, our home, our job, and our relationships anything having to do with our earthly reality. So what are the things that you've seen, that you've witnessed, that you want to come to completion? Is that the job that you didn't like? Or are you ready to call in the kind of career that is so purposeful and fulfilling? A big thing for me that I noticed was that I was actually feeling guilty of asking people to exchange value with me even though I know how much value I provide like everything here that we're doing all of us that join together in the wizarding world and celebrate in these beautiful videos this is all for free right you have so much access to this and of course like we all got to live our lives so I got to notice okay how am I in my Taurian energy I'm a Taurus rising how am I relating my personal value to the awareness of the relationship to value and money that the collective was experiencing, right? There was a lot of challenges. A lot of people were losing their jobs. A lot of people were going on unemployment. I luckily didn't have to do that and I could still pay my rent and I could still survive, but I noticed that I felt guilty for being the kind of person who makes money based on supporting people because I didn't want to charge people money for anything. I didn't want to make anyone spend any money. And yet, 
as I witness more and more every day, more people coming out of the Coaching Cauldron, which is my group program, more people learning how to connect to their magic in witch school and watching as it brings more abundance and more purpose and more joy to their lives. Of course that's worth it. Of course that's valuable. So I get to rewrite that story within myself. And that's been a big process for me. So it depends on what your relationship to your earthly reality has been up until this moment. But you get to witness, okay, like for me, I now feel so confident and so safe and secure in requesting a reciprocal exchange for my value. Because I see how much my gifts give to others. So these are very important questions to ask yourself. What is your relationship like to your own value? What ways do you not value yourself that you would like to? And how can the patterns or the behaviors that you operate in that maybe don't serve you living in alignment with the purpose or the soul's calling or the fulfillment that you desire, what are the behaviors that are ready to be laid to rest? ready to come to completion. And remembering that because the sun is in Scorpio, the light is being shown upon our transformative capacity, our ability to rise like the phoenix from the ashes. So again, not only do you want to look at what's ready to be transformed and what's ready to be completed, but a great way to honor and step forward into living your purpose, being in alignment with your soul's calling, is to give gratitude to your ancestors who came before you, those who dreamed you into existence, who hoped that there would be a world that was possible of supporting someone like you to live exactly the way that you know you're meant to, to make all your dreams come true. I live for my grandmother every single day. She lived to be 100, but she never knew true love. She never hiked Machu Picchu, so when I did that, I was like, this for you, Grandma. So in this moment, when I get to live my magic, I get to share my gifts and I get to be in love. I get to be so deeply, truly loved for exactly who I am, this weird, wild, witchy woman. So I honor her deeply every day. And this is the time when the veil is thinnest. Winter is coming. This is when we're said to be able to connect to the other realms. Maybe it's the fairies or other elementals that you feel connected to. Maybe it is the spirit of your ancestors or your your spirit guides, your angels. This is a great time to just be in meditation. Ask. I love my person, one of my personal favorite practices, and I talk about this in witch school a lot. I'm an air sign, so it's really easy for me to use channeled writing to receive guidance. I call upon whatever energy, whether it's my highest self or the goddess or my ancestors, to write to me, through me, anything I am meant to receive in this moment. That's a great practice if writing is one of the ways that you like to express or that you feel really connected. Or you can just sit in meditation, go out into nature, feel that that's where the veil truly lies. Is that if we can open our eyes and connect to the magical energy of the natural world all around us, we are going to receive more downloads and more magic and greater awareness than we've ever known possible before. So if you wanna create your own Halloween or Samhain full moon ritual, make sure that you have earth elements included because this is all about Taurus. Maybe that's literally charging crystals or carving a pumpkin or maybe making your ancestors favorite foods. Whatever it is, bring an earthly component into your ritual. Then in honor of Scorpio, the water, you want to connect to whatever it is that you want to transform. This is an opportunity to create New Year's resolutions in our ancient way, how the calendars used to be, this would be the new year. So you would get to set your intentions and make your resolutions and have all of these dark months to go into that seed phase and really watch and witness what kind of behaviors, emotions, thoughts, practices that you need in order to support your own sprouting and blossoming, your own rebirth, the manifestation of that transformation. And you know, any Taurus loves luxury. So if you wanna splurge just a little bit 
even if it's just on a beautiful bouquet of flowers for yourself. If you are intent upon calling in more abundance to your life, you want to align to the frequency of abundance by expressing it or experiencing it. And that doesn't actually mean you have to spend any money. You can go out and be in nature and attune to the energy of abundance all around you. Or you can buy yourself a beautiful meal. One of the things that I'm doing right now is staying in a luxurious place that makes me feel so alive and wonderful. And we have this gorgeous cabin on the creek. It's the perfect place for my Taurus rising energy. It feels deeply connected to nature and super luxurious and abundant. So it's a perfect combination. It's not just the luxury and just the like fancy things. It's like I'm sitting by the side of a creek. Everything is fabulous. So figure out what true luxury means to you. Not just fancy, flashy, gold, sparkly things, but what does the energy of feeling safe to celebrate, to be in reverence of your body mean to you? of your own internal resources. So maybe that just means that you spend your time oiling your skin and speaking affirmations to yourself, all of the ways that you want to feel about your body and you just love it so much. Maybe that's worshiping your partner or allowing yourself to be worshiped. Maybe it's going out and talking to the trees, thanking them, doing a channeled writing, asking them for their wisdom. To create a ritual for this full moon, is really truly about you giving yourself permission to step forward from this moment on in a new way to be transformed in your relationship to your earthly reality and your relationships whether that's with money with your family with your lover with your friends with yourself anything that you do is right whatever your soul feels called to whatever your heart says i want to do that make sure you listen to that whisper. I always talk about connecting to our intuition, our inner wisdom. That whisper will guide you. If some little voice says, oh, well, I wanna try this, or I wanna go there, I wanna do that, do it. Listen, see what happens. Let the goddess be your guide. And then don't you worry, goddess can guide you too. We all got the goddess inside of us. That's one of my favorite things about my partner. I'm always like, baby, are you a goddess on the inside? He's like, yep. He's like six, five Viking, you know? <laughs> so great, bless him. I am wishing you all such a sacred sewing, a happy full moon, so much magic and many blessings. I hope this video has served and supported you. Let me know in the comments below what you're going to be doing to celebrate this Al Hallows Eve and what you're calling in for the year to come. How you're going to allow yourself to be transformed by this coming season. I'm Mia Magic. Thank you so much for joining me in the wizarding world.